Okay, guys, this is the video here. This is going to be my four month review of the LV5048 inverter. Now, I'm going to start off with this because a lot of people don't know what an LV5048 uh, LV inverter is. So, I'm going to explain it to you. LV 5048 is uh, it's uh, 5,000 watts it's uh, 48 volts so that's what the 5048 stands for 5,000 watts 48 volts now I got these units here this is an inverter this is a charge controller and this is a transfer switch this is a 30 amp transfer switch so I got these sitting out here because I want to let you know what all you are getting when you get the LV5048. You're getting one of these. This one here is 1500 watt uh, power inverter and it's uh, DC to AC. This is 24 volts. The ones that's in the 5048, like I said, it's 48 volts. But I'm just using this as an example. This is a pure sine wave, pure sine wave inverter, and the 5048 is a pure sine wave inverter. What what makes that inverter so much better to me? Uh, it does the same thing that all of this right here does. This right here is a 3024 MPT maximum power point tracking uh, 30 amp 24 volt charge controller. And like I said, this is a 30 amp uh, transfer switch. All of these things here is built into one unit on that 5048. So you don't have to do a lot of wiring, wiring this up. Like on here, you got, on the back of here, you got two wires coming out of the back here. And if you hook a meter up, the meter is going to hook up right here. You got to run the meter and mount it wherever you're going to mount it to. You got your ground here. And then your power is going to come out here. Then, you know, here's all your little gauges telling you how much power is put in, what your battery voltage is, whether you overloaded and all of that. That's on there. So then you got this screen here. This screen here. And this little box here, what this is going to do, this is going to take the power coming from your solar panels. It's going to bring it into here. It's going to regulate this using the, the MPT, maximum power point tracking. And it's going to charge your batteries. And when your batteries, uh, this right here is going to float the batteries. It's going to do everything that you need to do with your batteries to charge them up and keep your batteries uh, completely charged and keep them topped off. This unit is going to do that. Now what this unit right here is going to do, what this unit here is going to do, let me pop this off. You'll be able to, right here this says power cord. This right here will be your grid power. You will bring your grid power in right here. This one here says control panel. This one says generator. So you're going to have your generator can go here or your solar power can go into here. Then you will have your grid power coming into here. And then this right here is your load coming out. And it will come out and go to your source, to whatever you want to to transfer. And uh, what it'll do is, say like if your inverter, the batteries get too low, and your inverter is getting ready to shut down. When your inverter shuts down, it'll automatically switch over to grid power. Now all of this stuff here, you don't have to have all of these separate boxes. All of this stuff is built into the 5048. So once I got that out of the way now, now that you know what all you getting inside of that one box, let's go out here to the unit and I will tell you the things I like about it, the things I don't, and things that I think need to be improved and uh, what I feel that the unit is, 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 
if it's worth buying. Give me a second. Let's go out and get set up. Okay, guys, I'm out here. This is the 5048. Now, down here is where everything comes in. You got right here, that's coming from the batteries, right there into the inverter. Right here, this is coming from your solar panels outside. One of these is coming from your grid power. The other one is taking the power to your sources. So that's all you have for this 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 um, setup. Now let's 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 get up here. So you got everything that I was showing you just a second ago: the yellow box, the other black charge controller, and you got the transfer switch built into this one unit. So you don't have all of this different stuff that you got to run wires to everything. Everything is built into here. Now. Once I said that, let's zoom in on here, get set up, and I'm gonna tell you a little some of the things that I think I would like to see them improve. First of the thing that I would like to see is uh, when you go through, you got L1 and you got L2. On L1 and L2, one of them is lead is reading one side of the breaker box, the other one is reading the other side of the breaker box, the loads on it that you, you are using. So, uh, one thing I would like to see, I would like to see them add another screen to where you can go to one screen and you can see what both sides of the box is doing combined. So you ain't got to keep clicking back and forth. You could you can go to one screen, you can look at what each individual one is doing, and you can go to another screen, and it'll give you a total of both both sides of the breaker box, how much power it's using. That's one problem that I have with this unit. Another thing that I have with this unit is when it transfers and it goes from battery over to grid power, and when it goes from grid power back to battery power, it seems to be a little slow at transferring. And what happened is when my wife is on her computer, when it when it switches, that little bitty pause that you see when it switches, it 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 it, it shuts down her computer. But as far as the TV, it switches fast enough to where the TV stays on, you don't even know that, that it had transferred. Um other things like my pellet burner, it don't seem to bother them how how it when it transfers and you have that little brief second to where it doesn't have any power, everything continues. Right now the only thing that I can see that's it being affected is her computer. So I really have to keep uh um um what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get her a backup battery uh pack for her computer to where you can plug into the backup battery and you can plug that into the wall. That way, when it transfers, she won't lose her power because this is what she does for a living. She works and she needs her computer and, you know, she'll be in the middle of a call or handling something on her job and it'll transfer, especially on days where the sun is, is, is hadn't came out and the batteries can't top themselves off. It'll switch over, and she will lose all the data that she's working on on a computer. Them are the two main things that I don't like about this unit. Everything else I love about this unit. I love that you can run 240 loads. I love that you can. Uh, uh, you don't have to manually watch this unit. You can set it up, and once you set it up, it's set up. It does everything on its own. If it if it's if it's overloaded, it'll automatically switch to the grid till the till the load drops down, and when the load drops down, then it'll switch back to the batteries. When the batteries get low, it'll automatically switch from the batteries to the grid, and when the batteries get full back up, it'll automatically switch from the grid back to the batteries. It does all of that. You don't have to do anything. It does everything for you once you get it set up. Um, as far as that, I think um, that's the biggest part of what a lot of people ask me about this unit. Do it? 
um, have the function to where you can set it uh, for different charge levels on batteries? Yes, it does. You can set your charge level when you go in and you set it on user. You can set your charge levels how far you want. You can set your floats. You can set to bulk. You can set your equalize, but uh, on uh, lithium batteries, you don't want to use the equalize. So you also can turn equalize off if you use a lithium batteries to where you don't ha uh, have to use that equalizing function. You can turn it off. Um, it's a lot of other things that this thing, I can't go into everything because I don't want to drag this video out. But the load on here, how the surge is. I don't have no problems with it. I've seen other people doing a review on this unit and said they don't like it because it didn't have enough surge. I have not ran into that problem. I have ran table saws. I have ran uh, 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 grinders, bench grinders. I have ran compound miter saws. I have ran all kind of stuff on this unit. Haven't had any problems. Um, as far as that, would I buy this unit again? Yes, I would. Matter of fact, I'm going to buy one more unit and put it on the side of this one and double my capacity. And uh, we'll have 10,000 watts, and that will be more than enough watts to do what I need to do in this whole house. Um, any comments that you have, drop them in the comments section below. I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Anything that you want to ask about this unit, don't hesitate to ask me. If you need any kind of help or anything, you want me to answer anything or make a video showing you anything on this unit, don't hesitate to ask. I will do anything I can to help you. And if I can't get to you, I'm pretty sure one of my subscribers, all of them seem to know what's go going on and all of them seem to be very, very knowledgeable in this stuff. And I'm pretty sure they can drop something down there in the comments section to help you out. So subscribe, like this video, and give me a thumbs up. And uh, I'll see you later. Thanks. Have a good one.